In a quiet suburban neighborhood, Julia, a single mother, moves into an old house with her young son, Ethan. They're both trying to start fresh after a tough divorce. The house is old but charming, with creaky floors and a large antique window that overlooks the garden. As they settle in, everything seems normal until the first night. Julia is tucking Ethan into bed when he suddenly points at the window. M.O.M., there's a man outside. Startled, Julia looks through the window but sees nothing but shadows cast by the moonlight on the garden. She brushes it off, telling herself it's just Ethan's imagination. Still, a chill lingers in the room. Over the next few nights, things start to feel off. Ethan continues to mention the man in the window, saying that he watches from outside every night. Julia becomes increasingly unsettled as she starts noticing small eerie details. Objects moving around the house, creaks in the floorboards and once, a fleeting shadow near the window. Julia dismisses it all, believing it's just the stress of the move getting to her, combined with Ethan's overactive imagination. But the tension keeps growing, and she can't shake the feeling that something is wrong. Julia meets her elderly neighbor, Mrs. Carter, while gardening. Mrs. Carter, with a cryptic tone, warns her about the house. Strange things happened to the last family who lived there. They kept seeing someone outside at night. Julia, now more anxious than ever, asks for more details. But Mrs. Carter only replies, Just keep your curtains closed after dark. One night, Julia wakes to Ethan's screams, rushing to his room. She finds him hiding under the covers. The man is at the window again. He cries, heart racing. Julia runs to the window, throwing open the curtains and this time, she sees him. A tall, shadowy figure stands motionless in the garden, his face obscured by the darkness. Julia gasps and immediately grabs her phone, dialing the police. But when they arrive, the man is gone. There are no footprints, no sign of anyone having been there. The police dismiss it as a prank or a figment of her imagination. But Julia can't shake the terror of what she saw. Julia decides to dig into the house's history, determined to uncover who this man could be. She visits the town's archives and discovers something horrifying. Years ago, a man named Daniel Hawthorne lived in her house. He was a reclusive figure who became obsessed with his neighbor, a woman who lived there with her young daughter. One night, the woman and her daughter disappeared without a trace, and Daniel was the prime suspect. He vanished soon after, and his body was never found. Shaken by this discovery, Julia becomes convinced that Daniel's ghost is haunting her house, watching her and Ethan from the garden. Julia returns home, determined to protect Ethan. That night, as she puts Ethan to bed, she notices something strange. Ethan's drawing a picture of himself, standing next to a man with a hat. M.O.M., this is my friend, he says. Julia's heart sinks. What friend? She asks, trembling. The man in the window. He says he's here to help me. Julia's eyes widen in fear. She steps back, and just as she's about to confront Ethan, she catches a glimpse of herself in the mirror across the room and notices something chilling. She sees a man standing right behind her, but when she turns around, no one is there. It's in that moment she realizes the man isn't outside. He's been inside all along. Ethan had never been seeing the man in the window. He's been seeing him reflected in the window inside their house. And now Julia remembers strange things have been happening in the house, but only since they moved in. Ethan's of behavior. His sudden connection to this man starts to make sense. Julia confronts Ethan, who looks up with a blank expression. The man says we can all be together now. He whispers. Julia's heart pounds. She rushes to grab her son, but he resists. M.O.M. Don't be scared. He's my friend. As the lights flicker, the air grows cold. The man, who had been watching from inside the reflection, starts to materialize before her eyes. Julia realizes too late that the man isn't just a ghost he's been influencing her son, drawing him into his world. The real twist, the man was never after Julia. He's always been after Ethan. Ethan is the one who called him into their lives, unknowingly inviting him into the house through his innocent belief that the man was a friend. The last thing Julia sees before everything goes dark is Ethan, standing next to the man, holding his hand, staring at her with blank, cold eyes.